the leftists, when they supported uh, these massacres and supported, I mean, not just Rabah, I mean, all the crackdowns that happened after uh, uh, the coup, they framed it as a war on fascism. And uh, some of them came up with this theorization that, oh, it's the two wings of the counter-revolution fighting one another. It's not our fight. You know, let them finish off one another. You know, the Islamists and the state. But, you know, what happened is that after the state obviously finished off the Islamists, they turned their attention to us, you know, to, to the leftists. And we were finished. When it came to the infamous, the most infamous event, which was the massacre at Rabah, which is the biggest massacre since Tiananmen Square, um, the left urged um, uh, CISI's forces on. Uh, there was one infamous statement that they produced, and you parted company with them publicly. Can you tell me, from your point of view, why they did that and, and why you did what you did? In the run-up to the Rabah massacre, which is literally the biggest massacre in the history of modern Egypt, um, all of the left-wing organizations in the country, except for the organization that I personally belong to, which is the Revolutionary Socialists, um, they issued a statement that was titled, Ayn al-Fadd, where is the suspension? where they accused the government of being a government of trembling hands, like Ayadi you al-Murtasha, know, which is um, a description you know, for their cowardice and uh, for their, uh, how hesitant uh, they were. And the statement revolved around like saying, you promised the Egyptian people to suspend this uh, sit-in. So where is the suspension now? Now, this uh, stand stemmed largely, I would say, uh, from how they viewed the Islamists in the first place. From the 1940s onwards, most of the left-wing organizations um, in Egypt regarded the Islamists as fascists. Um, and they alluded always to <coughs> the anti-strike positions that uh, some of the uh, or that the Muslim Brotherhood had taken in the 1940s, and uh, they also uh, spoke of the clashes that used to happen on university campuses in the 1970s. And for those leftists, they just lumped up all the Islamists in one basket and and labeled them as fascists. And as for any divisions or, or any distinction between them, they, the leftists used to claim it's just division of labor, that you know the, the Ikhwan is just another uh, side of the coin of the same, uh, or another face of the same coin as the radical jihadis, but they are just dividing the labor between them. One would excommunicate and the other would uh, assassinate. So if you regard them as fascists, then you would support the military crackdowns on them as a war on fascism. Um, and in a way, um, the kind of divisions that existed in, <clears throat> in the country at the time, the polarization did not take place according to class lines, which is something that you would expect a leftist would fight for and push for. And that's what the revolutionary socialists were, were calling for, that it's not really a fight between secularism and Islamism. Because in case you didn't know, many of the strike leaders and the industrial action leaders, for example, who were at the forefront of the strike wave, they were Salafis. They were Salafis, they had their beards, you know, I mean, up until uh, the, the, their stomachs here. When it came to the work floor, they were as progressive as a Bolshevik. But once they left the, the factory, the, the political current that had reached out to them and used to articulate their demands were the Salafis. So these guys, they should have been your audience, not the Salafis. And if they went to the Salafis, it's because you're a failure in the first place. So now you're punishing them twice. You're punishing them by not being organized enough so as to attract them to your power base 
in the first place. And now you're calling for their massacre uh, because they are Salafists. The position that the revolutionary socialists had taken from our start uh, in the 1990s, the slogan that we raised at the time is that we are sometimes with the Islamists, never with the state. We are with the Islamists when they get kidnapped and tortured. We are with the Islamists when they get uh, dismissed and, and banned from running in student union elections. But when the Islamists make sectarian remarks about the Copts, we are with the Copts against them. When the Islamists make uh, or take sexist uh, stands when it comes to women or gender-related issues, we are with the women against them. Um, if the Islamists make sectarian remarks about like other minorities like the Baha'is or the Shia, we are with the Baha'is and the Shia against them. I mean, there, there is no contradiction about that. You know, life and politics is not black and white. It's very complicated. And you always have to navigate uh, uh, your way across the different terrains. But you cannot side with the state because the state is the source of all evil. The state are the ones that has the prisons, not the Islamists. The state is the one that has the tanks, that has the guns, that has everything, uh, not the Islamists. The state is also the, the, the head of the snake when it comes to sectarianism and, and religious conservatism. Um, who, who comes up with our educational system that is sectarian in the end and it's conservative? Who bans the banning or, or who bans the building of, of the churches with all of these complicated laws? So it is the old game of divide and rule and the state is happy to play with it and also to present itself to the minorities as its protectorate and its guardian. So I'm not saying that the Islamists are progressive, but at the same time, for me, the Islamists are like any other political current. I will find myself with them on occasions and we can ally and coordinate and work. And on other occasions, I would be completely against them. So the leftists, when they supported uh, these massacres and supported, I mean, not just Rabah, I mean, all the crackdowns that happened after uh, uh, the coup, they framed it as a war on fascism. And uh, some of them came up with this theorization that Oh, it's the two wings of the counter-revolution fighting one another. It's not our fight. You know, let them finish off one another. You know, the Islamists and the state. Well, you know, what happened is that after the state obviously finished off the Islamists because, I mean, the state is the one that has all the powers in the end. They turned, it's at, they turned their attention to us, you know, to, to the leftists. And we were finished. Uh, I think it's a disgraceful <coughs> position uh, that the Egyptian left had taken. Uh, history will never uh, forgive them. And I don't think that any of them actually has issued um, a statement of apology for, uh, for their position uh, regarding Rabah. And the sad thing, David, I think that if time goes back, I think many of them will repeat the same mistake. Because again, it's they have very bad politics that regards these guys as fascists in the end. Even now, even after 10 years, even after so many of them are, are, are now in prison themselves. I would say that some of the second and the third um, layer of, of activists in, in these organizations who shared cells, you know, I mean, with the Islamists and, and have seen their plight inside and got the chance to have conversations with the Islamists inside prisons, you know, not on the cafes as we used to do, you know, I mean, in the past or in, on panels and elsewhere. I have seen some people change and they, it's not like now they think that the Islamists are, uh, oh, you know, they are great, but you know, like out of human rights, uh, really position, um, they are against those crackdowns and they are against the torture that they have faced and they would, you know, support uh, uh, their release. But I would say that the majority of the leaders of these uh, left-wing movements, they still have the same rhetoric. I mean, up until now, uh, you have people who 
have just participated in this so-called national dialogue with the regime and they came out in a very how like they took this moralist you know i mean stand of Yes, you know, we will sit down and, chant, uh, and have this, these discussions with the regime, but we will not bring on board those whose hands have been dripped in blood. You are sitting with the people whose, not just hands, their entire bodies are dripped in blood, you know, with the military intelligence, you know, with state security police and the others. They are the guys who committed the real massacres. They have reached a conclusion that the Muslim Brotherhood needs to be eradicated from this society. Um, and I'm not saying that the Brotherhood, again, is a progressive necessarily force, but it's the elephant in the room. How are you planning to deal with it? It's either that we sit down and have talks, you know, I mean, with them and try to find a common ground. Because if we hadn't found this common ground briefly, in 2011, we wouldn't have toppled Mubarak in the first place. Uh, the re this revolution would not have happened uh, if we did not, if we had not joined forces. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood leaders are not to be trusted, but there are many sincere, uh, uh, younger um, activists in the Brotherhood who did fight in the revolution and who sacrificed their lives and played a heroic role both on the Friday of Rage and during the Battle of the Camel and, and other battles in the revolution where their leaders had taken a very disgraceful position, but they still did take part. Now you will find leftists who tell you, oh, you know, it's division of labor, you know, the leaders would denounce them, but they would still send, you know, their kids just in case, you know, things evolve. It doesn't work this way. You know, this is a vast social movement, a true social movement. And it has people from different classes and from different provinces, from different worldviews. And at every twist and turn when it comes to the political arena, you will find splits, you know, and people do split from them. And if we're not there having these channels of communication, trying to win them over to our ground and to some common ground between us, I think we're doomed. They will still continue to play us off against one another um, in the future. <laughs>